Okay, well, just a little add to that. I tasted a wine made in Western Australia uh, last week that was 17.6% alcohol. So it's a, it's a worldwide issue of high alcohol. Okay, our next uh, speaker is um, uh, our first uh, Thai speaker for the session, Mr. Prayot uh, Ping Piang Bunta. So I'm sorry for butchering your pronunciation of your name. I'm not very good with uh, Thai words yet, but I'll, I'll keep practising. Um, uh, Prayot is uh, a graduate of um, the local university here, Chiang Mai University, in food science um, before commencing a career in, in the brewing sector. Um, then he saw, the, saw a, a future in the wine world and then took an opportunity to study in Germany, so it continues our German theme. Uh, he studied at, uh, at, the, at the Weinsberg Institute, which is one of the older uh, teaching uh, institutions in Germany in winemaking, um, and then came back in the, the late 1990s, uh, took up a position as a winemaker and winery manager at uh, uh, PB Vineyards um, here in Thailand. And he's come to talk to us today about uh, practical winemaking in, in Thailand. So thank you very much. So what do you got? Thank you, Dr. Paul, for a uh, nice... Uh, introduction. Um, as you may notice, I'm one of a few people which doesn't have a prefix of professor or doctor <laughs> in in the presentation. There, uh, practically, um, come here to to introduce you to get to know our association better, Thai Wine Association, and talking about uh, wine making uh, uh, in general because we are six wineries and every winery will be a little bit different from, from, from the ideas of winemakers and so on, but I try to put them together and, and, and show you uh, the, the general winemaking process. First of all, I would like to talk about uh, Thai Wine Association. Okay. Uh, we are six members now, and uh, if we de divide it into, into uh, area-wise, we will find four members in the same area, which is called Khao Yai, wine area or wine region, uh, which uh, consists of Alcidini Winery, Grand Monte, PB Valley, where I work, and then Village Farm. We are in the circle of uh, about 100 kilometers away from uh, from each other. So actually you can go there and visit all four wineries in one day. Uh, the other area is uh, in Pattaya area, which is Silver Lake, which is around here. The first one is Khao Yai. It's northeast of Bangkok. This is uh, where we are right now. This is Bangkok, which is now underwater, as you know. So northeast of it, four wineries is here. The other one is in Pattaya, uh, where... Uh, Kun Surachai, the, the president of Thai Wine Association, operating winery and restaurant and uh, tourist attractions down there. And the other area is called Hua Hin Hills, uh, which is a uh, Siam winery. Uh, for Siam winery, is a little bit complicated because they are the biggest uh, producers in Thailand right now. They have several vineyards. They have one vineyard in, in, in Khao Yai area. Uh, they have one vineyard in, in, in uh, Hua Hin Hills, which is close to Burma border. Even though Hua Hin is famous for, for the, the beach and everything, but yeah, if you drive uh, 45 kilometers further, uh, you will find Hua Hin Hills close to, close to the border and, and about uh, 300 rise of, of vineyard stand there. But their uh, winery is somewhere between Bangkok and Hua Hin Hills. Um, the reason we, we have Thai Wine Association uh, granted in 2004 is that we wanted to, to uh, improve uh, the, the image of Thai wine, especially the, the wine which made from grape. And we, since in Thailand we don't have a real government official to control uh, our wine making, so we kind of get together and, and uh, wanted to 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 focus on quality within our members. That's why we come up with uh, the charter. So uh, in general, the charter we say Thai wine or Thai wine association members need to make wine from, from Thai grape. 
And if any members have difficulties to produce it from, from Thai grape, they need to, to import some grape or some wine to blend to, to, to make the amount of wine they wanted. They need to put that on the label so that uh, the consumer knows that it's not 100% uh, Thai grape or Thai grown grape. Um, the grape variety on the label, if uh, it stays uh, one single variety, it has to be at least 75% of that variety. Um, and if it's a blend of uh, more than two varieties and you state it on, on the label, uh, you have to have at the, the, the variety that's shown on the label at least 80% of it. SO2 level is normal like, like uh, in, in, in international uh, level. If we have dry wine, uh, less than 5 grams per liter of sugar, uh, you're allowed to have uh, like 210 ppm of SO2 uh, for, for white wine and for red wine, 160. And if you have uh, sweet wine, uh, you can have a little bit more of, of SO2 because you need it. And uh, next one is volatile acidity. For white wine, we uh, would like to have them lower than 0 0.8 gram. Uh, per liter as acetic acid and for red wine is a little bit more, it's 1.2. Alcohol content, uh, which state on the label, uh, must be fructuated within one uh, volume percent as per uh, excise department uh, required. And uh, quality assurance, uh, after this charter we will have a central lab test which is uh, run by the Siam Winery because Siam Winery, they are not only produce steel wine or sparkling wine, they also produce uh, wine uh, beverage, which is, they call it wine cooler, which means a little bit of wine, carbonated uh, water, a little bit of flavor and sugar to, to uh, introduce wine to, to the, uh, the, the beginner. It's easier to drink wine. Uh, it will have like five or six percent alcohol. And since they run that and produce that like 10 million units a month, if I can remember correctly, so they are capable of uh, purchasing a wine scan uh, instrument. So we use that wine scan to control uh, the analysis of our members. Uh, we also uh, control the, we call it uh, site inspection means uh, you need to have the amount of vineyard of particular variety that you claim you produce per year, uh, that the amount of wine produced and the, the area of the vineyard it makes sense. Uh, let's say you have one hectare of Cabernet Sauvignon, but you produce like 10,000 or 20,000 bottles of it. It, it doesn't make sense. So it's kind of gentleman agreement. That it's not a law here, but uh, we, we, we try to... to uh, focus on quality and, and uh, thinking in the shoes of, of a consumer that they can trust uh, the wine from, from Taiwan Association. Uh, this is the figure of uh, wine, uh, grape and vineyard from, from the recent vintage is uh, from uh, this year. Uh, more in depth will be presented by Kun uh, support tomorrow talking about viticulture in Thailand. But right now in Taiwan Association, we have, we operate about 372 acres of vineyard. And this year we uh, have 459 tons of grape, uh, which is a little bit less than expected. We expect to have like 600 or something, but uh, this year the, the weather doesn't allow it. Uh, the varieties, uh, when we talk about Thai wine, uh, we talk about Shiraz and Chenin Blanc, as you see. Uh, I put two figures uh, on, on the slide. The first percentage will be the area of vineyard, and uh, in the blanket will be the amount, kilogram uh, of, of yield. So we have uh, Shiraz, 48% of, of the whole 372 acres but we able to, to harvest 55% of the 459 tons. So because 
Thai market is still a red wine market. That's why uh, a lot of uh, TWA members focus on uh, producing red wine rather than white wine. Uh, the second uh, most important variety will be Chenin Blanc. 19% of, of uh, vineyard and 15% of yield. Uh, the next one is Columbard. Uh, Columbard will be mostly at Siam Winery Vineyard because they make a uh, very famous Columbard white wine, uh, won a lot of uh, medals with it. So uh, altogether, uh, PV Valley and Siam Winery uh, grow like 7.5% of Columbard, but uh, since this year in Siam Winery, they are so successful with, with their vineyard management, you can see the figure of, of, uh, of the yield is that 16.5% out of 459 tons. Yeah, next one, Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Sauvignon is a, a, a variety which uh, all members wanted to have in the vineyard. So we all have a little bit and, and in, in each vineyard and altogether 4.65% out of uh, 372 acres. But you can see from the yield only 0.4%, so it's not very successful. It's very hard to, to, to grow Cabernet Sauvignon in Thailand. We tried that since 1993-1994. Uh, uh, after five or six years, we thought we in principle got the wrong clone of Cabernet Sauvignon because uh, some Cabernet you, you just cloned it to uh, so that they produce less grape, smaller grape, smaller berry to get a concentrate uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. So we try uh, another clone from Germany, it's called uh, Marienfelder clone or something and uh, it, it's better than, than the former clone that we have, but still uh, compared to Shiraz or Tempranillo, it's, it's very small. Uh, the next one, Tempranillo. We, we are the first uh, vineyard in Thailand who grow Tempranillo. Uh, just because when we experiment to growing 50 varieties of grape in our vineyard, Tempranillo happened to be the second best red uh, grape variety. And then uh, in 1995, we decided to, to increase the, the, the amount of vineyard. But, we didn't know back then that Tempranillo can be very fluctuated in terms of uh, quantity. Some years they produce like 800 kilogram or one ton per hectare. Some vintage they produce like 200, 300 kilogram per hectare. Uh, very same treatment, same amount of labor and fertilizers, spraying and everything, but it's just, just normal. And the, S the Spanish people said that ah, it's normal for Tempranillo. So since we have them, we keep them but we don't expand the, the amount of vineyard. The other uh, interesting variety from, from the TWA member would be Greenash Gris, which is a big plantation in uh, Village Farm, the, the other uh, winery, which is also located in Khao Yai area. Uh, why Greenash Gris? I would like to think because uh, they work with a French flying winemaker, Mr. Chuck Bagu, which originally came from Languedoc Roussillon, and uh, green ash gris is something which, which he is familiar with. Uh, we have Muscat Blue, Don Felder, uh, which uh, are actually from, from the school that I have studied in Germany back in 1995. Uh, we have a little bit of Pinot Noir, Sangiovese in Siam Winery, especially in Hua Hin Hills, quite successful, and uh, Vionier, uh, which is uh, quite successful in, in uh, Grand Monte Vineyard. So uh, the typical harvesting of, of uh, wine in Thailand normally will be uh, about beginning of February until mid of March, except for Hua Hin Hills area. Uh, because uh, in that area, their season is like one month later than us, means the rain stop later and the rain start also later. So they prune their, their vines later than us, uh, almost one and one and a half months. I think they not even finished uh, the pruning today, right? Yeah. The farm manager is in, in the back of the room. So uh, except for Hin Hills, uh, they will harvest uh, until mid of April. And uh, 
all harvesting will be done by hand. I guarantee you that any winemaker in the world will choose to, to make uh, manual harvesting because you can uh, select the grape with a better quality and everything. And since we are not that big, uh, we will we, we be able to, to do that. And we do a sorting in field. I mean, uh, people will start selecting grape, uh, taking out the bad, bad berries and unripe or overripe berry already in the field once before it uh, delivered to, to the winery. And then we will uh, put like five or six people uh, on the sorting table to select them again. Uh, most of us doing that because uh, we really focus on, on, on quality of, of wine. Uh, we harvest during the day, uh, now five out of six, uh, except village farm, because again, with a French uh, flying winemaker, his idea is better to, to harvest during the night. And uh, I don't think uh, there is right or wrong here. I think winemaker is like, like a farmer. You, you work the way you're most comfortable with. I think uh, in our area, making day harvest, uh, it's easier to control the quality. People can see properly, people don't get tired. And, and uh, even though the, the temperature during harvesting is rather high, during harvesting, will be uh, the grape will come in like 25, 28 degrees Celsius. But we all have a facility to cool the, the grape down before we, we crush them. Uh, we transport our grape in the 25 kilogram basket. All of us uh, happen to, to, to use the same basket. Uh, I think it's, it's quite a good way. 25 kilo, kilogram is easier for one people to handle. And it's very gentle with the grape. Uh, you don't put uh, so many grapes so that uh, the, the weight of the upper part crush the, the lower part and it start fermenting or start the, the activities of microorganisms before, before we actually needed. And as I mentioned, uh, second sorting before uh, uh, the grape go to the destimmer and crusher. That's, that's a common uh, practice we, we do. For our vinification, uh, we all uh, apply the active, active uh, wine, dry yeast. Uh, none of us do uh, spontaneous fermentation just because we, we are not sure. And uh, there's a research of, of uh, Rajamong Khon uh, in closer to Bangkok two years in a row that uh, our wild yeast is actually uh, most of them is apiculatus yeast and it can produce uh, alcohol only 9 to 10 uh, percent alcohol and then they die. And with the grape uh, in Thailand which is, has a quite high bricks, high sugar content, Normally, our white wine, we have like 11.5, 12 uh, volume alcohol, and the red, 13 or 14 or even 15. So uh, active uh, dry by yeast uh, usage is, is normal. All of us, we have uh, temperature controlled fermentation. means uh, it's like, like uh, in, in every country uh, that, that doing wine. No chaptalization needed. Uh, the gentleman who, who just asked, Professor Chrisman, just uh, mentioned about chaptalization. Uh, we don't need it because we can wait until uh, the wine reach the, the bricks uh, or, or the alcohol content that we want because uh, our harvesting season, it's like one month before the rain will start. So uh, if it really bad weather and, and the grape should ripe later than, than we planned, we still can, can, can wait until uh, it, it reached the, the bricks that we wanted. Uh, for red wine, all of us making mash fermentation means uh, fermentation on skin with a controlled temperature. And uh, each winery will leave it shorter or longer depends on, on, on the winemaker and depends on the grape variety they use. Uh, as you know, we, we have uh, many possibilities to make red wine, like use heat or enzymes, or things like that. But all of us used to, to do uh, mash fermentation for, for red wine making. And uh, most of us also own some oak barrel for, uh, for aging. 
and I'll show you the, the picture later. Uh, why? I think because Thai people somehow get used to the taste of red wine, which has some oak in it. Um, before Thai Wine Association start making wine, uh, the people who are really strong in the market is uh, French wine, and uh, under the the organization called Sopexa, they import wine from France and introduce, uh, like, teach Thai people how to drink wine. And the message that they implant into Thai consumer is that uh, Bordeaux red wine is the best. Red, a good red wine should taste like this. I mean, uh, uh, get the character of Cabernet, of the blends of Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Merlot, something like that. So uh, it can help that we, we need to work with, with oak to get that touch of vanilla, of, of, of red wine to, to, to offer to, to the market. Uh, malolactic fermentation, it's optional here because uh, I know some, some winery don't do it at all. Some winery do it ev every vintage as, as, as a common process. Uh, for me, myself, I, I will taste the wine first, and normally, most of the time, I don't need to, to do malolactic fermentation because, uh, as I mentioned, we, we, we harvest red grape at very ripe uh, uh, period, like 24 bricks. And uh, back, we will have like 7 or 8 gram uh, per liter total acidity, and the profile is that the, the amount of malic acid is very, very small compared to tartaric acid, so uh, it won't need it. Uh, Cold stabili stabilization, I put it here because uh, wine in Thailand has a lot of problem with uh, crystallization in bottle, especially us uh, and in, in, in Khao Yai area, because we are located on the limestone uh, uh, plateau. Water and, and soil contains very high amount of calcium and potassium. And if you don't do the cold stabilization properly, uh, you will find a crystal after several months if you keep it in, in, in a cool, cooler place. Uh, I myself used, used to bottle wine in 187 milliliter for the hotel. And they use it in the, in the mini bar means they put this wine in, in the fridge. And after several months, maybe two or three months, they return all my, my wine and said, uh, your wine is not good. It crystallized, you have salt in it, or something like that. So it's really, really a uh, big problem. Uh, before bottling, we will have a sterile filter before bottling all of us. Uh, I mentioned it here because I just uh, watched uh, television talking about winemaking in China and some of uh, the winery in China, they, they actually pasteurize wine before bottling or, or hot filling the wine, which is not common practice here in Thailand. So we, we all uh, cold stabilize and, and, and sterilize filter before, before bottling. Uh, the last part, I put screw cap or cork because uh, Thailand is like, like uh, in other countries uh, that people start to know that actually cork uh, doesn't really relate it to, to the quality of wine. Uh, actually in PB Valley, we are one of the first who offer twist-off cap uh, wine and bottle in year 2000, which is turned to be too early for, for the market. So uh, it was the vintage 1998. We, we launched it in the year 2000, and uh, people really re rejected to, to, to pay 500 baht for a bottle of wine, and then doesn't have a chance to, make, to cut the foil and then screw the cork and make the pop effect. But uh, right now, uh, two, three years ago, uh, some members uh, like Grand Monte Siam Winery start to introduce uh, putting wine in a screw, screw cap. And I think people now start to, to accept that, that uh, the screw cap doesn't mean it's bad wine or cheap wine. So next year, uh, our wine in, in the beginner level, it's so what the wine will be also in the screw cap. Just because it's very hard to get good cork now today, and the price is not really affordable right now. The good cork also goes to the famous chateau in France, and what we have is mostly a pressed cork and very low. They call it 
A A B A A minus or something, but I rather think it's very B B B plus and, and for for the A A price. So I think school cap will 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 be our our future of 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 uh, bottling wine here in Thailand. Uh, next, I would like to talk about each winery in brief, uh, just to if you don't have a chance to to go to to our wineries just because uh, flooding or, or timing not suitable. Uh, we talk uh, briefly about six members and uh, I just put it in alphabetical. So the first one will be Alcidini. So Alcidini is very interesting winery. Uh, a few years ago, uh, couldn't support the owner and winemaker uh, make Am Amarone style uh, wine uh, with Chiraz and Muscat Blue. Uh, but I just learned yesterday when we taste his wine, he said he stopped doing that. And uh, I can imagine if if you if you have a scrape and need to leave it dry for a couple of days, and the grape you lost 20, 30 percent of 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 the moisture of the water, and then you need to ferment it to have a wine which is rich in 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 color and character. It's not easy to do that, and and it's not every year that that we can do that. Uh, Kun Support is the owner and, and a winemaker himself. Uh, each year he produces uh, about 15,000 bottles. Uh, this figure is taken from, from this harvesting, so the, the uh, expectation of bottling will be 15,000 bottles. Uh, this is the picture of, of their winery, which is uh, actually a cold room, uh, uh, temperature control. Here and uh, still a uh, small scale of wine making, and uh, but Kun Support has everything uh, a winemaker need to 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 make wine. Have a small lab of his own to do SO2 analysis, uh, TA analysis, alcohol analysis, everything. So this is uh, Kun Support himself. <laughs> Uh, the winemaker, and uh, this is how how uh, LCD new wine looks like. Uh, the next one is Grand Monte, uh, also located uh, in Khao Yai area, as I mentioned. Uh, their wines mostly from uh, Shiraz. They prefer to call it Sira, <laughs> to be different <laughs> from from other people in the market. They have a Cabernet Sauvignon, very successful in the wine competition. Uh, Chenin Blanc and Bionier is, is their, their unique wine because uh, no, no other wineries offer Bionier in the market. Winemaker is Nikki Lohit Nevi. You met her last night on the stage and tomorrow she will talk about her research and, and her experience. Uh, this year they expect to, to produce 42,000 bottles of wine in different brand. This is the winery uh, very nice looking, uh, yeah, small to middle sized winery here in Thailand. Uh, fermentation tanks. You will find our fermentation tanks from PB Valley, uh, Grand Monte, and Siam Winery that looks very much alike we are, because we all get it from the company called uh, De Franceschi, the Italian company. This is the 25 kilogram basket uh, that I talk about that everybody use the dumping shiraz into the stemmer and crusher. And a uh, good thing about having new wineries because uh, Nikki just operated it first in Vintage 2009, right? Uh, when you have new wineries, you also have new barrique or new oak cast, which is uh, right now is it's very costly to, to, to purchase. So this is the picture of Nikki at work, <laughs> sampling. And this is their products right now. Uh, Vionier, as I mentioned. Uh, a rosé called Sakuna, which uh, happened to be the name of uh, Kunvisut's wife, mother of Nikki. Uh, white wine from Chenin Blanc. This one called Spring, and uh, they also produce the other one called Sole, which means Sun. 
So uh, it's, a, it's actually a great idea of Nikki to produce two different kinds of wine from very same vineyard. So she goes twice, harvesting twice. The first one uh, with a bunch of grapes which exposed to the sun uh, have a, a higher, higher ripeness, uh, maybe less uh, acidity. And pick it first, make so layer wine out of it, and then uh, she pick the one which is under the shed. It has more green, herbal, mineral character and put it in the name of spring. So this is the idea if, if you have one vidyat and, and one, you want to make uh, two type of wine out of it. Uh, the next one is PB Valley. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have here Chiras Tempranillo Don Felder uh, because uh, I came from a uh, study from, from uh, Weinsberg and took it along. And now each year I have to, to write a report back to, to, to my school uh, how many kilograms of Don Felder I produce or how many bottles of wine I make. Uh, still keeping contact with, with my school. I have Chenin Blanc and Colombard. Uh, we have two winemakers uh, in, in our winery. Uh, me, myself, and uh, my assistant, Jun Pira Seidergrun, which uh, study viticulture and winemaking from New Zealand, uh, from Lincoln University. He joined me five years ago, uh, bringing new ideas, and uh, we, we working together quite well. Uh, this year, we expect to, to bottle 118,000 bottles. Uh, this is our winery. Our press machine, also from a company De Franceschi. This one is a membrane press. Uh, the red fermenter, this one is from company Riga, and this is the only tanks we got from Riga because the rest we got from De Franceschi. Our aging room, we have uh, 12,000 liters uh, oak fat for uh, aging red wine, mostly Shiraz will go in, in, in this this tank, and we have uh, about 100 pieces of, of uh, oak cast. Unluckily, not all is new, but we tr try to convince the owner to, to purchase some more. Well, this is me and my assistant. This is our product. We have uh, the level of Sawadi wine, which is wine which is light and fruity, no oak edges. Uh, the standard level will be PB. I uh, have uh, Chenin Blanc, which uh, partly aged in oak, rosé, and then red made from Shiraz. And then we have a premium uh, called Pirom. And uh, we also have the one called Pirom Supremacy, which is a blend of chi whether Shiraz with Dornfelder or Shiraz uh, Cabernet Sauvignon with Dornfelder. Uh, next one is Siam Winery. They have Shiraz. Sangiovese is their specialties, Colombard also, and Chenin Blanc. Winemaker is uh, Catherine Puff, uh, the professor from, from Geisenheim would know her quite well. Uh, as I said, they are the biggest winery here in Thailand, so this year they expect to, to produce uh, yeah, 263,000 bottles. As I mentioned, all... Uh, Fermentation tanks look alike because of from the same company, also the press machine. Uh, Siam Winery uh, is the only uh, winery which uh, working with 500,000 and 2,000 liters uh, oval shape uh, wood uh, cast uh, because Catherine uh, thinks it's better with, with her style of wine. So this is Catherine with uh, her colleagues who runs wine scan for us. Couldn't we uh, rat? So this is uh, the sample of, of their products. They're making uh, Chiraz Rosé, or sometimes they call it White Chiraz. This is the premium uh, brand of them called Monsoon Valley, and, and very famous Thai artists uh, uh, write this, this uh, label for them. Uh, right now, they are also the only uh, members of Thai Wine Association which make uh, sparkling wine with the real method champagne, but uh, some just only some thousand bottles a year. Uh, last one would be Silver Lake. Silver Lake they are focused on two varieties, Chiraz and Chenin Blanc. 
uh, not the last, the next one is Village Farm. Why maker is uh, Mr. Chak Baku, and uh, they produce right now uh, quite a small amount, 13,000 bottles a year. Uh, this is the picture of, of, of their, uh, their winery, a small one, a small fermenter, small stainless steel tanks, lots of uh, oak barrels, and this is uh, the this demo and crusher, and as I said, the, we all work with this kind of basket. This is a picture of Mr. Chak Baku, who is now uh, uh, in charge of making wine, and this is Kunit, uh, in-house uh, winemaker. She looked after all the wine-making process when, when Chak Baku went away, because he come only three times a year for, uh, for uh, harvesting, blending, and bottling. So this is the picture of their uh, products. We have Chenin Blanc, Rosé, it's called Jasanova, and uh, a red wine called Tango, a new one, I never taste it. Uh, Village Farm is, is the last winery that I will uh, talk about. They have uh, Giras, Cabernet Sauvignon, Chenin Blanc, and also uh, Green Arch Gris, but uh, they are not in, in production right now. Uh, same winemaker, because originally Chuck Baku worked for, for Village Farm, and then he helps Silver Lake making wine right now. Each year they produce 22,000 bottles. This is the picture of the winery, uh, French style, the fermentation tanks. You can see they have two levels, and again, a lot of uh, barriques. Uh, just because uh, the, the pe people look look for this kind of character, Mr. Chak Baku. And this is their wine. They have a rosé, white Chenin Blanc, white Chiraz, and then the blends of, of Cabernet, Sauvignon, and Chiraz uh, under the name Chateau de Brume. So this is uh, the very short introduction to, 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 to Thai wineries, all, all the members. And uh, I learned that uh, the winemakers also in this room, if you have any question, feel free to, 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 to ask. And uh, if you want to uh, know more detail, please visit our website, taiwineassociation.com. In there, you will have uh, the overall uh, information, and there's a link to each, of each winery itself. And if you have a direct question to me, you can uh, contact me at Prayut at kaoyaiwinery.com. Uh, I really thank you for, for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Prayuk. Um, I think we've run out of time for questions, so I'm sure you can ask questions in the coffee break. Um, thanks very much to all the speakers for this session. Um, we've had a, a, a very a range of, of topics addressed, and I think you've, we've got some good understanding of uh, tropical winemaking as well as uh, perspectives on uh, future challenges with uh, alcohol reduction. So join me in thanking all the speakers. Thank you, Dr. Paul Garbin and our presentation. Uh, before we go for the coffee breaks, I have an announcement. Uh, for the attendance, we would like to depart between Tuesday 15 and Wednesday 16. Please register yourself at the counter service in front of this room because we organize the uh, dropping service from hotel to the airport for you. Besides, for those who would like to depart after 16, uh, Wednesday 16, uh, you are recommended to contact the hotel reception in advance one day before your departure. I think you're a little bit... Uh, clear about this. And if you have uh, any further uh, question, please contact the counter in front of this room. So now we will go for the coffee break, I think 15 minutes, and then we come back again to continue this next session. See you.